All right. Welcome everyone who's uh, joining us tonight. Uh, we've got a good crowd signed up, so happy to have everybody join us for tonight's webinar. Uh, our goal is to do a couple more of these uh, this fall. So uh, as you're listening to tonight, if you have any uh, questions or ideas about uh, future webinars you'd like to see a little deeper dive on, please uh, shoot me an email and let me know. Uh, we'll be uh, glad to do some more, try to answer as many questions as we can. Uh, this webinar is going to be focused on the PKB pathway. Uh, it's kind of a combination of explaining um, a lot of the common questions we get about the tour, the way that it's structured and the value that it may bring to your daughter as you're trying to plan for um, her tournament schedule and preparation for college. So I'm going to try to touch on a lot of those topics as we work through this. Um, and uh, hopefully it'll answer a lot of your questions. Um, so uh, with that, let's get started and uh, we'll uh, go through. Uh, so a little bit about myself. My name is Mike Parker. I'm the tour director with the Peggy Kirk Bell Tour. Uh, I've been with the tour since it was founded um, back in 2007. I've actually got a, a baseball background, baseball family, go Braves. Um, but I've uh, been in the golf industry now for 19 years. I've uh, been directing tournaments most of that. Um, and including when we founded the PKB back in 2007, pretty much for the last decade have been focused on the girls' side of things, uh, the development of girls' tournament opportunities and, and those things. Um, the PKB, um, we uh, again founded back in 2007. It's an initiative of Girls Golf of America, Inc. We're a nonprofit foundation uh, supported by donations and uh, corporate gifts, as well as the, the fees that we charge to do. Um, our goal, uh, the reason why we founded this originally and, and still today, is just to try to give girls more equity of opportunity in the tournament space uh, so that they have more opportunity to play, to be able to hopefully grow the amount of girls playing by sustaining their participation, especially in the middle and high school years. Um, as players are transitioning out of the more developmental programs and getting them to play year-round golf, not just maybe on their high school team. Um, we wanted to give girls uh, uh, aspiring collegiate players the opportunity to be recognized, to be seen, uh, to get to college, um, and to make sure we could do it uh, at an affordable level for the highest quality product we could provide. Uh, so we're real excited to be able to do not only our, our national level program for our elite and national competitive level players, uh, but also the, the expansion of our regional program on the developmental side, uh, trying to get more girls out there playing. So tonight, what we're going to cover, uh, we're going to focus first talking about the PKB pathway, how the tour is structured, how your daughter would move through our uh, progression uh, through her junior golf career. Uh, then talk a little bit about the classification, so the different steps that um, she will go through uh, along our pathway and what tournament she's eligible for along the way, a uh, real common question we get. I'm going to take a note about the 2020-2021 national schedule, um, talk uh, about how that, how that schedule is structured and why, um, as well as then get into the tournament strength of field. Um, how tournaments are valued in juniors as far as from a rankings perspective and things you may want to consider when you're looking at trying to choose one tournament over another. Uh, touch on priority-based entry, which is how the PKB um, handles uh, our invitational level tournaments. Um, and then a couple thoughts on how to maximize that schedule through the PKB. Uh, we'll have a little question and answer form at the end as well uh, so you can jump on and um, and hear that at the end. Okay, so to start with the PKB pathway progression, um, I've got a couple people who are saying they're not getting sound. Um, let me just try my toggle. All right, let me see if that uh, did the fact that we did that solve the problem on your sound. Am I good now? Can you hear me and see me? All 
All right. If, if you folks, if, you, if you're not catching sound, it looks like most did. Okay, good. All right. Just had a couple folks that uh, were having some issues. So perfect. All right. Thank you. Um, all right, so let's go into the pathway progression. So the way that the tour was structured, our goal was to be able to create a way that a player coming from a developmental program, whether it be uh, your local girls golf program or your junior league or uh, just playing at your, your local golf course with your um uh, you know, your parent or, or family member or otherwise, uh, they give you the, you know, this is the place to get on that pathway to, to be able to get all the way to college, if that's your ultimate goal. And you'll see through this infographic, the main piece, our end game is, can we get these girls the access to the collegiate game? Um, the next piece um, is the structures. We have four classes that you're going to see. Uh, that we'll talk about next that are going to work you through the different phases of the developmental process. And those are focused on starting with engagement, then learning how to compete, then starting to get to being recognized, and then about excellence and elite performance and get, earning the scholar scholarships and those of beyond. Um, and as you'll see, those are the focus of the, the way we wanted to think about how the different stages of development we're doing. Um, and along the way, the players are gaining confidence, they're gaining experience, they're getting that exposure, and then they're developing that ranking along the way. Uh, so it's this upward progression of adding as we're moving in our, you know, as our competency uh, continues to improve. So on the PKP, we have four different classifications that players can, can have based on their age. Within the tour, we have two different programs, which I mentioned at the beginning. We have our national series and our regional series. So if you think of the PKB, there's basically two different products that, that we offer. The national program is focused on players looking for elite competition, national exposure, and ranking development. So these are players that have played before, they've competed in multi-day tournaments, uh, this is that place where you're coming to, to really compete and get recognized for it. Our regional program is focused on players being able to gain experience, focusing on the de player development, and it does feature some modifications to rules such as double par, allowing caddies at the discovery division, different things that we do to make the game more accessible, make the competition more um, uh, comforting and accessible to players that are just getting started, maybe playing on their own for the first time or competing in a one or two day tournament for the first time. Uh, so it's going to take them from there all the way up to preparing to get ready for that national stage. That's what our regional series is designed to do. So within these four classifications, you're going to be working um, up the, or in this case, down the ladder uh, to be able to uh, meet these different stages of development. As you can see, they are based on yardage. The PKB does not use age divisions. Uh, we, we have yardage and skill-based divisions so that you're able to progress at your own pace. There's not a um, an arbitrary date based on age that says when your time is ready to move up. We, we have these four steps that you can go through that you when you meet the standards um, can move up through so that you're not being held back if, you, if you're an elite performer or if you're a player that is maybe later to the game, came from team sports in late middle school, early high school, and, and you know, have found a love for golf, you know, that player can end up playing college golf. It just, you, you know, they have to get immersed to it and they've got to get the competition. So being able to start that player as a class three player playing competitive tournaments at an appropriate yardage for their skill level really goes a long way um, to um, encourage that player and, and to have that player to have some success while they're doing it, um, which is a big piece um, to it. So um, we have our four classifications. So for classification four, we have our discovery division, which plays in and around 1,800 yards. Our class three players play at our futures division, whether at the regional or the national level. 
our class two players are starting to progress back. This is getting towards those collegiate yardages. So 5,700 plus yards, um, whether at the regional level around 56 and at the national level starting to push up to 58. And then our class one players uh, are, are, are more elite players that are, are tournament tested starting to push back to 6,000 yards and beyond. Uh, biggest tournament, our big invitational coming up next month will play 6,250 for example. So you get some, some real large tests there. So going into just a little bit of each uh, class, a little bit more details, a class four player, which makes up about 10% of the PKB membership right now, about a thousand girls participating on the tour currently. Um, this is our nine to 12 year olds. There is an age floor for discovery. You have to turn nine by the end of the season, which is defined by September 30th of 21. Um, you'll have all ranges of skill levels in Discovery. Some players that have been playing U.S. kids competitively um, and are already tournament tested, and some players that are just coming to um, individual competition from Junior League or others. So uh, it's set up at about 1,800 yards. Players can have a caddy. Uh, we play double par. So it's really an uh, experience just to start uh, learning how to compete, being around other young girls that are picking up the game, a real encouraging atmosphere uh, for, for them. As we move to our next three classes, these are all determined by the same age bracket, being that we do not use age divisions to determine uh, where you're placed. The age cutoff for our class three through class one players is you must be in your 12 year old year. So players 11 to 19 can participate at these levels. Uh, you must turn 12 by September 30th of 2021 to be eligible for the 2021 schedule. That schedule has already started. Uh, so if you turn 12 during this time period, you can go ahead and start playing now. You do not have to wait until your birthday. You are currently eligible to participate. Uh, for class three, this is our largest division on the tour. It's about 41% of our membership. Um, their average uh, performance index ranking, which we're going to talk about in a little bit, somewhere between 150 and 425. So it's a lot of range to the skill level in the class three player. As again, there's this is the development, developmental portion. So you do have some players that quickly progress through. You have some real strong young players, as well as a lot of high school. Interesting note as far as the breakdown, uh, about 60% of class three players are in their high school year. Uh, so even our high school, you know, it's the largest bracket for our high school participants is there. So it's 60%. And then 38% um, are your up and coming middle, middle schoolers um, that, are, that are playing at that class three level. Maybe, um, you know, maybe not have the distance yet to, to move back or, or otherwise. Our class two players, uh, this is 21% of our membership. Um, these are players that have exhibited, uh, you know, a scoring differential under 18. I'm going to talk about that here in a second. Uh, this is players that are shooting in the uh, 80s uh, from red T yardage, uh, gold T yardage. You're going to shoot in the mid to high 80s. Uh, your performance index is going to be somewhere in the 100 to 250 range, typically. Um, most of this group, 78% uh, are up and coming high school players. So these are players that have you know, play on their high school teams, have played some tournaments, but may not be quite, quite yet ready for national level competition. Um, just, again, getting that experience. And then you do have about 22% of the group, which are experienced middle schoolers. So these are players that have excelled at the futures level and are making that quick progression up uh, to high level competition at a younger age. Um, and then last, our class one, this is our highest level of classification. Uh, that we have. It's 28% of our membership uh, have this classification. Uh, these are players with scoring differentials under 10. So these are players that are shooting in the 70s uh, pretty regularly in tournament competition. They've got proven scoring at the national level. 88% um, of these are high school age players. These are experienced and elite level high school players. And then about 12% are elite middle school players. So these are players that are ahead of the curve at the middle school level uh, from the skill. With these different classification jumps, we do require a resume be submitted to be able to move step to step. So you have the ability, um, once you feel that you've met the standard uh, to move up, you're able to submit a resume to our tour committee who get to review those resumes about moving up to the next step. The 
big things to look at is what factors should be thought about when thinking about increasing classification. Uh, so I listed four here, the things I would th want you to think about, uh, wondering if it's time for your player to seek a higher classification. Uh, number one, it's scoring. My scores justify a stiffer test and competition from the course, either by difficulty of the course or by yardage of the course. Um, so the scores are showing you continually shooting consistently strong scores within the division you're playing. Okay, I'm thinking I may be ready to move up. Uh, the next piece, my finishes justify a stiffer test in competition. You're all you're showing up to every tournament and you've won, you're winning every tournament and going, okay, you know, what left do I have to prove at this level? It's time to give a stiffer test. Next, driving distance. My driving distance is long enough to compete at the longer yardage. The big thing to, to about driving distance, and um, I hear from a lot of families how long their children hit the ball. Um, every player that plays the tour is not long. Um, but as you move up, it's not just that the par fives get longer. It's the par fours. That's where the teeth of the golf course gets at, especially at the bell level. Um, you're playing 370, 380, 400 yard par fours. Um, that's where the really the stress gets put on the games uh, of these girls as they're developing in their junior careers is carrying those long, you know, hitting those longer clubs, that lower ball flight coming into a green, um, especially if the pins, you know, anywhere tucked behind something, you know, you can't roll it in. You've got to be able to get it in there and stop. It's hard to stop a hybrid. Uh, so you need to be holding a shorter club to be able to get that ball close to that hole and go after it. Um, and driving distance is a big factor that's going to allow you to do that. Um, now, there are some players with immaculate short games that find a way to, to compete and can cover that piece up. And then one of the things you just want to consider is, is it time to put that so much stress on that part of the game, or can we continue to develop the other parts of the game by playing in, this, in a specific division? Um, and last, sometimes my age will justify an acceleration of the progression because I'm running out of time. Uh, some, again, those players that may come later to the game um, or, or, or players that are still actively competing, but maybe their scores are just outside the threshold, but they they're 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 competing, they're playing, they're training, they they want to get to college. You know, sometimes there's it's just you have to you have to move up and you have to give it a go um, to be able to to show the college coach what you can do. Uh, that's been the really nice growth about the tour is having that prep division now is that players can um, play at that prep yardage and compete and the coaches can see 57, 5,800 yard scores from you in that developmental phase. Uh, so you're not missing out um, on getting that coach, you know, what they want to see. They want to see you in that 58 to 6,000 yard um, to be able to play at the collegiate level. So that, that having those two steps close to that standard are really helpful um, for these players. I include this uh, slide in almost everything I do because it's um, it's a big piece. And it's when you're having this thought process of is it time to move up as you should be pushed or otherwise, I always say, you know, trust the process. Uh, we've been doing this now for 13 years, so going on 14. Uh, this is a snapshot of uh, eight years ago. This is the Futures National Division final order of merit standings. What you'll notice, um, some names on there that you may recognize, uh, Jennifer Chang, who was sixth here, just played, just made the cut at the KPMG. She's a rookie on the LPGA Tour. Amelia is uh, one of the top women's amateurs in the world. Um, Gina Kim uh, played in the U.S. Women's Open last year. Um, Haley, Naomi, Kirsten, all of Division I players. Uh, so they all played the Futures, and not every one of them finished first. Uh, so the, the fact of, you know, there is a process to this, you know, if you're not having success at every single moment, it doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. Um, and it doesn't mean that you're falling behind or otherwise it's, you know, you have to continue to compete and play and it, you know, it can come to you along the way. 
So next I want to transition uh, about how the PKB schedule is structured and I'm going to kind of go into different pieces about that um, along the way. So the schedule, you can, we kind of look at it on season. So the PKB uh, year runs fall to summer. Uh, so we are just starting the new season for 2020-2021. Uh, so the fall for us is the regional series are just ending. They all end typically in September. And then we're starting up the new national program. So this month we have a tournament every weekend in our national season. Uh, right now we're on a Virginia swing here through October. Um, and then we hit our invitationals at the last weekend of this month, all the way through the beginning of December, we have four of our big invitational tournaments. Um, most of those players earned their way through through their performance last year. So the progression is as you play the series for this year, you're earning status for the next season start by getting into these different invitationals, which will kickstart your next year. As we transition into the winter, uh, we'll have a weekly tournament every weekend uh, with maybe two exceptions. There will be a tournament up somewhere on the East Coast that players can participate in. Um, they also have uh, one of our big celebration events, our Linville Cup uh, team event and leadership challenge that's held at Mid Pines and Pinehurst every year. Um, and that's how we recognize our regional champions to come and compete in this really amazing uh, mentorship and team competition event that happens in January. Um, as we transition into the spring, this is where we get we go on our collegiate course uh, trips. So starting in late February all the way through early May, we are going to travel to most of the collegiate golf courses on the East Coast. Uh, we're also looking at some expansion of some new areas this year where you may see some new courses coming on as well. Uh, these uh, events are some of our highest ranked events, as we'll talk about here in a little bit, as well as a great ex chance for you to kind of take up immersive weekend. Not only are you going to get to see a golf course that the colleges practice on and play on, you're going to get a chance to play it at their yardage if you're at the bell level, um, as well as you're going to get to chance. It's a great opportunity to do a site visit, go see the campus, get a feel for the city and the campus and the town. Uh, that's a big piece, uh, you know, as you're starting in the recruiting process. We have a couple featured invitationals, usually one a month, uh, that are on the schedule. Real excited to be able to return to Birdwood this year, UVA's golf course up in Charlottesville, Virginia, uh, which is going to host our spring invitational. They did a great uh, renovation of that course. It's been closed for about a year and a half. Uh, so real excited to be able to bring the girls back there, uh, which will be our featured invitational in March. Um, and then in the spring is also when we're going to start our regional programs throughout the country. Uh, some may start a little earlier. Our Florida um, uh, regional series may start a little bit earlier in the year. Uh, but most of our Carolinas and North are going to start there sometime in the spring, March, April, early May. As we transition to the summer, uh, we have a couple signature events. We kick off the summer with our big 54-hole event. It's Country Club of Salisbury, the PKB Open Championship. And we end our national season with our tour championship uh, at Pine Needles, which, of course, has hosted multiple U.S. Women's Open and, and has another one upcoming. Uh, that event is an earn entry event. So you earn entry into that tour championship by how you play during the season. Uh, so you order of merit standing along the way is what gets you access to that tour championship. As well as this is the peak season for our regional program. Uh, we'll have more regularity with those tournaments. We'll mix in a couple two days as well as we're building to the finales of the regional program in the fall right there in September. So the schedule, how the 2021 uh, schedule breaks out, there's uh, about 10, it'll be 12 championship events. Again, about one per month uh, that we have scheduled throughout the year. I'll be about 30 plus national 36 hole events that'll be available uh, to players to be able to participate in. And again, the tour championship will conclude there in August back at Pine Needles. Um, the division breakdown. So uh, our Bell National, which is for our class one players, will have a 30 plus events somewhere in the 35 range that will be available during the season. Uh, our prep preview. So this is for our class one and our class two players. Uh, there's a 12 event season that prep preview started this past weekend at Green Valley. Uh, so we just had our first event there and that will run until a finale event 
uh, in and around April. Uh, so it's that transitional period. Um, and our futures is our largest series. We have about 35 plus events on that. Um, and those started uh, have already begun. And again, that will finish up at Pine Needles as well uh, for the finale of the Tour Championship. Uh, last year's Tour Championship for the futures, I'll show you that on a couple slides now, is one of the, is the highest ranked futures event we've ever had. Uh, the quality of play at the futures level just continues to, to improve, um, which is great. Um, and as well, and then besides the national schedule, like I mentioned, we have our regional programs. This year we had seven different regions. Uh, we're hoping to continue to expand that. We have 60 plus events uh, that we'll be able to offer uh, this coming year. So one question I ask is uh, kind of how do I know which events um, that, that I can schedule for? So I'm going to show you, this is a um, screenshot of uh, PKB's website at pkbgt.org. And this is the schedule link, uh, which is under the tournaments piece right there. So you can click on the tournaments uh, to be able to see um, this screen. And up here at the top of the screen, you have a couple different options. You can search by different segments whether it's gonna to default to all tournaments, but you can search by classification, you can search by the state that the tournament is held, or you can come over here and you can search by the different division, whether you're a Bell um, looking to play the Bell series, the Prep Preview series, the Futures National series. Um, so you have the ability to search each of those series. And when you click those buttons, it's only gonna show you events that are available to you at that level. Uh, which is a really handy way, especially for the classification, this button right here. If you click this one, it's gonna allow you to choose class one, class two, class three, or class four. And it's going to let you see um, those, just the tournaments. It's only gonna list the tournaments that are available to those classifications. Uh, so it's a nice way to be able to just see specifically what's right for my daughter, uh, where she is at that time. So uh, one of the questions uh, we get is about uh, how to create the ideal schedule. What factors should I be considering when choosing um, the tournaments to play in? Here are a couple factors I think you want to consider. Max, how do you strike a balance between maximizing your resources, creating the developmental opportunity, and focusing on advancement of skills? Golf tournaments can be expensive. You have to travel. It's time away from work for you parents. It's time away from school for the kids, whether they're getting in late and got to wake up early and go back to school on Monday. You know, you the developmental piece is a key. Learning how to compete, learning how to show up to a tournament expecting to play well and to finish high. How do you deal with the mental side of the game, uh, the expectation setting that players, the pressure they put on themselves to perform? Um, you know, creating opportunity by playing in events that are going to allow you to qualify for future events, you know, qualifying for larger opportunities, you know, so there are some things that you want to consider um, in picking events. And then at the end of the day, it's advancement of skills. Getting out there and playing is what's allowing the player to develop. Shooting lower scores will solve most issues. So if you screw up all the other choices as far as where to play and all those things, if the player goes out and plays well, it probably will cover it all up. Um, but um, hopefully we're going to give you enough information to help make some good choices along the way. So big question I get asked about the PKB is why should we play the PKB or how, what, what makes one tournament better than another or how is that even judged? Uh, so I did some data analysis to kind of show you kind of how the different tours are, are seen through the eyes of some of the ranking systems. Uh, so this one is looking at the Golf Week uh, ranking system. Golf Week uses an average strength of field um, um, formula to determine how they rank tournaments. It, there's some flaws to that uh, is average uh, for all our math people out there is uh, a statistic that can really get skewed, um, but it is what it is. So here's where we are in looking at that data. Um, so when you're looking at the chart, you can see the breakouts. I broke out the AJGA events by the different types because there are different, every AJGA event is not the same. Uh, they have four different levels of tournaments within their program. Uh, so with, depending on which one you're playing in is kind of depending on the value that you're getting for that tournament. 
Uh, so when you're looking at this chart, uh, you can see um, big things to look at. So this is every tour in the country with at least five or more tournaments in the system. Um, you'll see here in the average field size um, in this section, the PKB is one of the larger ones in the tour in, in the country as far as uh, tour size. Uh, we used to lead this stat before we invent before the prep preview was added. When prep preview allowed us to be able to separate out the divisions a little bit, um, which helped. Um, but still, we're one of the larger in the in the country. Uh, average strength of field. So this is how they do their metric. Um, and as you can see, um, this is of the 10 events. So this is the PKB. These are all Bell National events. So they're choosing for each of these tours, the top events. Uh, you submit them each year to the to Golf Week, uh, your top events. Uh, so this is looking at the PKB's top 10 events. And as from the East Coast tours, it's the strongest tour on the East Coast um, outside of the, the AJGA program. Um, you're seeing the top event on the next column, which is showing you the highest ranked tournament. The PKB Open was the 25th best tournament in the country this year so far. Um, our invitational field uh, for the event coming up in November is about 30% stronger than that open field. Uh, so it's gonna be higher than this. We're real excited. That's gonna be the top uh, field in tour history uh, next month. Um, and you'll see how many events over here in the far column are in the top 50. Uh, so the different tours, uh, you know, have different strengths that they provide by, um, you know, the, the fields that are generated. This is based on their calculations of player strength. Uh, this is not, uh, you know, any subjective view that we're making or otherwise. This is just pulled from the data. Um, if you're interested in all the data, here's a link right down here at the bottom that will show you where all this data was pulled from. Uh, I pulled it just at the beginning of September when this was done. Looking at it from a, um, just specific to the PKB, where our tournaments fall in. So this is looking at junior golf scoreboards ranking. Every time we run an event, we run a analysis of the field. So we're able, and this is for all divisions, Bell, Prep, and Futures. Uh, so we're able to see how strong the field is, um, as well as how deep. We know we have some of the bigger fields, so we wanted to look at how do we compare as far as how strong the fields are. Uh, so when you're looking at this chart, uh, so if we just look at the bell category, it's showing you how many events that we offer that meet these different um, uh, grades of tournaments. The average girls field size for a ranked tournament uh, in this last 12 month period was around 24 girls. So I use that stat to kind of be able to compare every tournament to the top 24 players in the tournament. So that's the average field that's being created um, for, for girls. So looking at this, this is how many tournaments. So if we're looking at that top line right here, it's how many tournaments where the average strength of the top 24 players is inside the top 500. That's a top 30 event in the country, top 40 event in the country. The PKB has three. Um, over here on the uh, right, I'm kind of showing you a, maybe an outside example that we charted. We chart outside events as well so we can have an idea of where things are kind of falling in. Uh, so the North-South was an example um, of, a, of a event that kind of meets that criteria, a U.S. girls. Um, the AJGA Invitationals are going to be in that classification. The bulk of the PKB uh, Bell Division sits in this next group, the 500 to 1,000 and 1,000 to 1,500. Um, so these events are all really strong. This looks like AJGA Opens. It looks like uh, the U.S. Kids Worlds uh, for their teens. Um, and I, bring, I list this as an example because it's very important that you know just because an event labels itself as a world championship or a national championship or whatever fun name they can come up with, uh, it doesn't mean that it has the stature or the, the years of history or the results or the field strength. Uh, in the case of U.S. Teen Worlds, that is a, a world event. Uh, they, you know, from their 12 and under program, which is really, really strong. Uh, they do continue to pull in a very diverse uh, field. So you get a lot of value out of that tournament from that perspective. Uh, but still, from a rankings perspective, it still sits in that third tier. Um, it, it's not, you know, an elite, elite tournament um, for, for the schedule. 
When you're looking at kind of the next fees, this is again, as you're seeing the PKB progression is for Bell Prep Futures. Uh, this is the real nice advantage that we have at the prep level is that these tournaments are still ranking in that 1500 to 2500 range, which means they're valuing like the previews for AJJ or you know a, a hurricane uh, event, which we have some players that play in those. Uh, so you're getting that value more than than, than their traditional events. Um, and even with the futures, like I mentioned, we had that great tour championship event for futures that was ranked really high. Uh, the championship events for futures also rank um, uh, stronger as well. So players, even at playing at the what would be considered our lower divisions um, by the classifications are still getting ranking value, uh, which is important as you know, we're working along the process. We're trying to get into more tournaments, trying to get into better tournaments that that builds up as we go. And again, if you want to go read this data and see, it's all coming from juniorgolfscoreboard.com um, right there. Big other value to the PKB, uh, being that we've been doing this now for 13 years, is the relationships we've developed through the college coaches um, and the pipeline that's been created through players coming through the tour that have gone on to college. Right now, it's about a thousand members that have gone on to play in college during the history of the tour. Um, very valuable asset that we have is our recruit PKB college consultant, Brandy Jackson, who is able to provide insights. Uh, to players uh, along the way. Um, and we have over 275 programs in the country that have had a PKB alumnus. So these coaches know what the PKB is. They, they know we have, we stay in contact with them uh, through emails with results and contacts about players. Uh, so it's a nice network that you're able to leverage. Our invitational events are the big, um, you know, premier events that we run that give you a chance to really show off your skills. Uh, big questions I get about how do I qualify for these events? The main things typically are either some are standing on your order of merit list. So how many, how did you do within your series for that previous year? The others are how, what's my ranking? How am I ranked at the PKB? How am I ranked nationally? When you're seeing these tournaments, especially this time of year, you're probably seeing at large pools. These are places where we allow you to get on a waiting list saying, I would like to play in a specific tournament. And then we select from that. So basically just traditional invitational. So whenever you're seeing the word at large application, that's a chance for you to say, I want to get on a waiting list for this tournament. I'm interested in playing um, if, I'm, if I'm one that's chosen. Uh, we do we use a registration code method. That's when you go to register for an event and it asks for a code. That means you're not exempt yet. Uh, look for an application event. That means that's probably your way to try to get a code to be able to play in that event. Um, and then priority-based entry is a big part of what's coming. I've got a slide coming up on that that I will talk about um, priority-based entry. So how do I know if an event's a priority entry? I get this question a lot. Again, if you go back to the schedule um, on, on pkbgt.org where we were earlier, you're going to see that when the tournament's listed, you're going to see over here in this section which divisions we have at that specific tournament. So, uh, for example, the Regional Invitational has our Prep Preview and our Futures National. And at our Bell, uh, at our PKB Invitational, that's our Bell. What you'll notice below that, both here and down here at our National Tournament Champions, you'll see there's a little black line. It actually says priority in about font size 2. Uh, but that black line is indicating that it's a priority-based entry event. So when you see that line, that means that you are going to have to apply to play, that you're not just going to be able to sign up and play. Whereas when you look at these other tournaments, uh, like Cutter Creek, for example, uh, the Cutter Creek event, you can sign up and play. You can hit the register button and you'll be able to add your name into that field. The only way that that would not be the case is if the field is already full. Uh, we have, especially in our winter season and in our regional program, we do fill a lot of our tournaments. So if you get waitlisted because an event is full, that means we have exhausted our allotment of tee times at that course. Uh, so we will waitlist you unless we're able to get additional spots for that tournament. You'll see that class one waitlist uh, used a lot. That's for players at our class one level that are trying to get into our bell events. 
most of the priority based entry events we have are at the bell level though there are a few at the prep and the futures level so what is priority based entry so this is the system the pkb uses to create a registration method for our elite events to guarantee the strongest fields possible for these events um, just as we want at our futures and prep level to give players developing a positive and and ranking positive environment to compete we also want to do that for our elite players players that have earned that highest status by doing priority based entry we are able to guarantee at our highest events that the strongest field possible comes and i'm going to talk about in this next couple slides is about how that strength of field is calculated and why that matters um, so we want to be able to have these strong, deep fields, because again, if you're using average strength of field, the depth of the field really matters as well. And that's what priority-based entry allows us to do, is just to guarantee that we maximize that value at these tournaments for all the players at the different levels of our classifications. The PKB has two ways in which we judge players. Our performance index, uh, that is our ranking system. That's going to rank every player that plays at our 18 and up level um, by what they shot, what the course difficulty in which they shot it, how many players they beat, and it has a win bonus in there. So all these factors are going into this formula that's trying to determine who the best players are on the tour, and it ranks them all. Uh, to have a performance index, you must play four rounds on the PKB to get an official index. Before that, you'll get a provisional rating. Our order of merit standing is for um, the calculating where you are playing in relation to your peers within a specific division or series. So if you play the Bell National Series, then you are playing to earn points on the order of merit on the Bell National Series. So having consistency in the division you play does bring value as you can improve your performance on the order of merit, which may give you access to some additional tournaments in the end especially at the regional level, you being able to try to earn into the Linville Cup or some of these other events. Also, a huge question is how a ranking is calculated. Same with the PKP Performance Index or Junior Golf Scoreboard. There's four major factors that go into how your player is being judged from a ranking perspective. The largest one, usually about two thirds of their ranking is based on score. And score is based what they call scoring differential which is how you play the number you shot minus the course rating. Every par 72 is not the same. So course rating is the thing that you want to look for. On every tournament we post right at there at the division, as well as every scorecard we give you, it's going to list this course rating. That's the actual par for the day. It's not par 72 or otherwise. It's how hard is the golf course and what you shoot comparatively. That's what your ranking is being judged on the most. That's what coaches are looking at, what your differential are. They don't want to know if you can shoot 72 for 50, 100 yards. They want to know when the course gets to a differential of 75 and 76, what are you going to shoot? Can you keep it in the 70s when the differential gets to 75, 76? That's what they're looking for. Um, the other three factors are going to be weighted by the different systems. Where did you finish? How many players did you beat? Uh, how big is the field you played in? that is going to be used as a calculus to determine um, part of your ranking what was the tournament worth this is where that strength of field comes in uh, how good were the other players in your tournament how that you beat you're going to get credit for that um, you know playing at the longer yardage events with the better fields you're going to get more value than the shorter yardage events obviously it was harder to perform better at those tournaments because the competition was stronger the course was harder um, and then last, um, a lot of the systems give some kind of kicker for wins. So if you do win, you get a little little piece on the end. And again, the wins are usually judged by the strength of field as well. So you get a more for otherwise. Uh, this is an example of PKB's performance index. If you've never been there on our site, the performance index rankings. So you're going to see that ultimately we have our calculation, our for, for proprietary formula we use, which does the index over here. Um, that uh, is judging this is the current active one that ran last night uh, so again you're going to see scoring differential here how many points these are earned points for us is how many players you beat and where you beat them that's how it, how the point calculation is figuring out you'll also see wins that's being factored in and again you have to play 
in at least four rounds to be um, getting a um, performance index with the PKB. This is Junior Golf Scoreboard. This is the national ranking system that's the standard. I, I pulled Sydney Hackett. She's our reigning Bell National Order of Merit champion. Again, you're going to see their calculations. Again, scoring differential for Junior Golf Scoreboard is 65%. Strength of schedule is 25%. And top finishes is 10%. So that's how they're weighting your different scores. Um, Junior Golf Scoreboard is a little different as they take 75, your top 75% of scores. So they do drop the bottom 25% of your scores. Uh, so you'll notice your scoring differential is probably better on Junior Golf Scoreboard than other ranking systems. And that's because they're they're weeding out the lower scores in their calculation. Um, and it's just a full, they run, their system is every multi-day tournament that you play in um, across the country. So if you play in a multi-day tournament, they turn in the scores, Junior Golf Scoreboard ranks it. And again, they use these different uh, variables to be able to judge um, how they rate you versus other players. You'll see over here where your national ranking is. It has some really neat tools as well. If you're a member, you can get in and see state rankings. Uh, you can see rankings by a uh, grad year, which in the year is the factor that matters. If you're interested in going to college, getting a college scholarship, you're not competing against everybody. You're competing against players in the grad year. Those are the players that are going to be available to coaches in that specific year. Uh, so where you stand in your class is a much more important number than where you stand nationally. So final thoughts, just kind of wrapping those pieces up uh, about uh, looking back on how the PKB maximizes your value and how we're set up to do so. Uh, national exposure is the biggest piece. Having the relationships with the college coaches, having all those alumni that are at these programs and the connections and the uh, see, right now, college coaches are in a, a, a perpetual dead period, which means they are not to allowed to recruit on site. So you are not going to see a college coach at a tournament this fall. They are not allowed to be on site until right now, January 1st, and it's been continued to be pushed back. Uh, so all the all the recruiting is being done remotely. Uh, we're doing some live streams at our national events and at our invitationals to try to give the coaches opportunity to see the players play. Um, and, and other pieces along those lines to do. Um, the tour also is big, you know, ranking development, giving players the strongest, deepest fields possible. Uh, the being able to have the different classifications is a big piece for us to be able to create value at each of the steps of the pathway uh, for each of the players, um, you know, on those steps. Um, advancement of skills in a year-round competition, being able to play year-round is a big as a big piece, uh, not going dormant. The college player is going to play year round. The coaches like to see, especially as you're getting into those recruitable years, um, that you're a year round player. Um, and then being able to leverage the improvement that you have to push to the next level, whether that's on the PKB or out, you know, going to try to qualify for the U.S. girls, for the U.S. Women's Open, um, you know, playing in your section events, you know, play the state girls, state PGA. These are great events that get you to these big national tournaments. Um, these are great pieces to get your future exposure. So at this point, what I want to do is I want to just stop um, that's the, this presentation. Um, I'd love to be able to answer a couple questions if anybody does have um, questions they want to answer. Uh, this webinar will be posted online. We have a, a YouTube portal that has the webinars we do. So you'll get a chance to re, uh, see. And if you wanted to go back and look at something from this, you'll get a chance to do that. Um, as well as, again, I want to do some more of these as well. So if there's any topics that you'd love to um, hear more about, a little deeper dive, I kind of did a summary today, um, but we'll, uh, we'll try to do some more this fall. So do shoot us some emails um, about uh, your ideas for uh, webinar suggestions you'd like to see. Uh, so if you have a question, there's a chat function on the webinar. Please uh, feel free to use that uh, to uh, shoot me a couple questions, and I'll take a couple here before we go. Um, so I have one. Um, right now um, related to um, the virus and uh, college recruiting. Um, and how is it going to affect the spring? Uh, good question. Um, it, it, it is. <laughs> um, it, it will. Um, we, we don't know what our status will be. Um, our, our protocols we, we anticipate will be in place as we head through this uh, fall and winter period. Um, 
college golf uh, right now, uh, some some programs are playing, some are not. Maybe 50-50. Uh, Brandy probably can speak to this better than I. Um, but uh, you, you, it is a little bit of a pause this fall. Uh, I know they are hoping that the spring will be a traditional uh, season for them. Uh, the championship season for women's golf is in the spring. Uh, so the plan is still for NCAA to have that uh, championship season there. Uh, but the ranking has definitely been, um, um, you know, I mean, the recruiting on site of for one, it's just completely been uh, stagnant. Um, and by rule, they don't have that opportunity. So that's going to definitely be a wait and see. Um, I feel for those class of 21 and 22 ers who are heading into this period trying to make commitments and otherwise, uh, because you're just not going to have the same recruitment um, period that is typical. Um, and, and that is a struggle. Uh, again, uh, I mentioned this at, right at the end, but Brandy uh, Jackson, who uh, does consulting with us, uh, she is a great resource to use. Uh, she, you get a 30 minute free consultation with your membership. Uh, use it. She can help you piece together this puzzle um, of the college recruiting piece better than I. Um, and it's uh, it's included in your membership. Uh, so I'll have that slide up here in a second. Um, next question was about uh, joint PKB tournaments. Do they factor into performance index order of merit? Yes. Any tournament that we run um, in, or in partnership, uh, the CGA, we do the Jimmy Anderson, we do the Tiger High School, uh, the Women's South Carolina, we do their high school event, uh, the Kings Mill event upcoming with MA PGA. Any of those joint events, they all count to your performance index. Um, occasionally, some of these events may be a part of the national series, like the Donna Andrews Invitational, for example, was a Bell National event uh, for the junior players. Uh, but typically, they're just performance index rankings. So you're getting ranking value out of them um, through our partnerships with these associations, um, but uh, may not be order of merit with them. Uh, next question relates to peak years to be seen by college coaches. Uh, when do they start looking? Um, it, it really depends on the uh, level of the program. Uh, you'll be shocked at how early it begins for the elite level programs. Uh, they are looking at middle school players, early freshmen in high schools, um, where those players are. They're getting the rate. You're getting on the radar of those high level programs. These are your top 20 programs in the country. Uh, they, they really accelerated. They usually have their next two years classes taken care of well in advance. Um, so, um, you know, for, for your lower level division one, your division two, and, and then your division three programs, that's going to be more your high school years, especially latter part of high school years as you come into the division two, division three level. Um, so there's a ton of opportunity to play, especially here on the East Coast. Um, a ton of Division II programs and the build out of Division III really keeps growing uh, year after year. Hopefully uh, COVID will not uh, slow down that progression because you really started to see more playing opportunities being created for girls. Um, but uh, they are looking. Um, again, one of the nice things, uh, the PKB not having age divisions is as players are kind of moving up in the divisions, they're playing with recruitable age players. So you may get seen by being with recruitable age players. And that happens at all levels. So uh, players, you may get seen at a prep preview event because you have a coach that's there watching a player that they're recruiting at that level. So uh, it, you do see it along the spectrum um, there. Handicaps. Um, we do not use handicaps through the tour. We use scoring differential. That's the factor that the ranking systems use. Uh, you, for if you want to keep your handicap, which you would need to do for USGA events, for example, that's where you always want to grab either from the scorecard or from the tournament site the scoring um, rating and the course course rating and the course slope for our event. We use custom setups for almost every event we do. We almost never use the red tees or the gold tees. So you cannot use a course scorecard to enter your child's tournament results. You will need to enter a special tournament score, which is one of the options when you're entering a score on a handicap system, on the USJ handicap system. You'll choose tournament score, and then you will have to enter those numbers, the course rating and the course slope, and the, for what we played, and then her score to get credit for that round in your handicap. So good question on that one. 
Uh, next question, I'll take a couple more here um, about playing prep for the full fall summer year. Um, or do you play prep until you can move to Bell? Uh, great question. Uh, the, a lot of players, especially those that are entering prep for the first year, will play the entire prep schedule, especially at the prep preview level, um, as they're, uh, you know, kind of see it through. That's going to end in the spring, so that as you head towards the, winter, the summer months, um, the big difference is in the winter and the spring, especially on the East Coast, it's going to be cold. The grass is going to be dormant, especially if you're south, and it's going to be wet. All three of those factors make the course play harder. So rushing up to the bell where we're going to have them back at 6,000 yards is a big golf course. So the prep allows you, that prep preview allows you that kind of transition year as you're moving towards it. Then when you get to the summer months, it's dried out, the ball's rolling, that lower ball flight that you may have still at that age bracket, uh, that ball's going to hit and roll versus hit and plug. Um, if you're not carrying the ball 200 yards and the ball's plugging every shot, 6,000 yards gets really long, really quick um, when you're not getting into the par fours and two. Um, is there any easier way um, finding your daughter's golf performance index? Yes. If you go to your player profile, it is listed right below her picture. Um, so just go to your, her player profile on the PKB site and you'll see what her index is um, on that page. It'll show you where her standing is and some information down below to the left, um, which will tell you a little bit more about her stats for the year. Um, can you play in national and regional events? Yes. Uh, so like I showed back in that original chart for our different classifications, if you're a class three player, you're eligible for both futures national and futures regional tournaments. Now, when you move up, so for example, when you move to classification two, you no longer are eligible for futures regional tournaments. So those do not become, those are no longer available to you, uh, but you're available for prep preview, prep regional, plus futures national. So you have a lot of options in that classification two standing. Um, so you you just lose that um, futures local. But yes, definitely. Uh, players, why would you play regional if you're a national level player? Uh, sometimes you you may need an extra tournament. You're trying to just stay sharp to prepare for a tournament. Uh, maybe you're working on something with your swing coach and you want to go play tested competitively, but you don't want to do it in a ranked environment. Go play a one day tournament. Get a chance to tr you know feel it out where if you the score isn't great. You, it's not hurting your ranking. It's not hurting your standing. It's not going on to your official record. So those tournaments are really handy uh, for a national level players uh, to use in that manner. Um, Discovery, I have a question about the Hilton Head event, the Discovery Invitational. The Discovery Invitational will make its return next season. Uh, so we took a hiatus for this uh, fall. Uh, what we've noticed with our, our, our high-end, uh, especially high-level Discovery players as they're, they're winning um, a lot at the, the regional level is that they are already transitioning to our futures national level. Uh, so for our, since we rebranded the Palmetto event as our regional tournament champions, we wanted to give those players a chance to go ahead and play at that 18 hole, 36 hole level for that specific tournament. Uh, we will be bringing the regional, I mean, the Discovery Invitational back next season. Uh, as its own standalone um, event. Uh, so we will have something special for the discovery. It may actually be earlier in the season instead of at the end. Uh, so there will be some additional opportunities as uh, the discovery is now 10% of our membership. We're real excited about that continued growth. Uh, so we'll be looking to add some opportunities uh, for them along the way. Uh, so I have a couple more questions. Looks like two left. Um, looking about um, Delaware's uh, question about uh, one of our Northeastern players. Um, is there a difference as far as the different regions um, for quality scoring differential otherwise? Uh, so scoring differential, no, that's just based off score difficulty. So the division, no matter whether you play it in Delaware or Florida or Kentucky, the differential is the differential. The course difficulty at a prep is going to look about the same no matter where you play. Um, the, the disadvantage the Northeastern players have is they just don't get as much access in the Northeast to tournaments that have depth of field and strength of field. Uh, so when you look at Junior Golf Scoreboard, for example, the strength of field number for the Northeastern players is much higher uh, because if they're not able to travel down south as much, 
to get to those bigger, stronger fields, uh, they do have a, a skew in that direction. So there is a bias. The coaches understand that. Um, but, uh, you know, you can, the things you can do to add, and you see a lot is some players will take some spring trips down to try to play in some of those events to, um, you know, supplement their schedule and help their strength the field. Um, and last question here at the end. Uh, so um, can you play primarily at the Futures National level and occasionally play up to Bell? So no. Uh, so a classification three player, so a player that can play Futures National, once you move up, so for example, class two, your prep preview in Futures National, but once you move up to class one, you are no longer eligible for the Futures. Uh, so you are only eligible for the Bell National and the prep preview. Uh, so we would expect players that are making that transition, if you are able to get the classification one status, then you would only be eligible for um, Bell and Prep. The only exception to that that ever happens is at our tour championship. Uh, sometimes we'll have players that are moving out of futures uh, in those summer months, and uh, they have earned a spot in the, uh, in the uh, tour championship as a futures player. Uh, so we do allow those players to compete in the division that they earn that spot in at the tour championship. Um, and again, that's why the tour championship is the strongest features at the end of the year, uh, because it is those players playing. So um, great. I'm glad to be able to answer those questions for you. If you have any questions moving forward, um, I've got some information here. I'm always available if you would love to do, you know, if you're looking for more information specific to your daughter, please reach out. I'd be happy to do a consultation with you to talk about your daughter and specifically, um, as well as again, Brandy Jackson, our recruit PKB college consultant, um, does a free 30 minute consultation, which is included in your membership. All you need to do is just email her to set that up or email me. Uh, we'll be glad to help you out along that. Um, also, I always want to mention this. We do have financial assistance available through the tour. We have a first tournament free program for new players. So if you want to invite your high school teammates or your uh, girl at your club that is interested and maybe hasn't gotten into tournaments, that first tournament free program is a great place to start. Um, and the Inspire Dream Achieve grant, we do have need-based grants for players um, that need financial assistance. Uh, it uh, basically gets you 50% off entry fees up to certain categories of uh, quantity of amounts. Uh, so both of those are available on PKB's website. So definitely jump on there if you or you know somebody else that may need some assistance to be able to participate. Again, we're a nonprofit foundation. We want to make sure there's no hurdles to getting girls out playing. Um, and last, there is a um, webinars.pkbg.org is where we will have these posted. I have a couple webinars that I did last year. There's one specific to rankings. Uh, there's one specific to the summer. Um, so you're more than welcome to go view those. They're on our YouTube channel. Uh, so go check those out. There's some great information in there if you want to deep dive on any of those topics. Um, so that's all I have. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. Um, definitely reach out if you have any questions and we look forward to seeing everybody uh, out on the course soon. Take care.